Okay, you guys, today we're talking about something a little bit different. And I didn't want to do this video like very formally, so we're doing it very informal today. So we're talking about catch cans versus air oil separators because this is a question I get asked so frequently, we're going to discuss it today. So as you guys know, I run an IAG air oil separator on my STI and I run a radium dual catch can setup on the BRZ. Now, both of these are very good options, but why would you want either one? Oh my God, dude, this wasp has been in here all day. Dude, like, off. Ah! So as the piston is going up and down in the cylinder, some of the high pressure that your piston is compressing against the valves can slip past the sides of the piston. What happens is that high pressure air, that high pressure gets pushed down into the crankcase. Now you gotta have somewhere for that air to go to depressurize the crankcase or else you're gonna explode things. So what you have is ventilation ports. You've got one on each head when it comes to a Subaru, or if you're like other cars and you only have one head, then you have one ventilation port off of the top of it. So we're gonna use this EG33 as an example. So as the piston's moving, obviously you can get some of the high pressure that passes through the backside and it'll go behind the piston itself. What happens, it'll build up pressure on the backside of the crankcase and then that pressure needs somewhere to go. So if you look at the top of your, if it's a Subaru, your Subaru engine, you're gonna have a PCV valve right here, at least a PCV port, which goes through the access panel on the back of the block. So what that does is it lets all that high pressure escape from the block so that way you're not exploding things and uh, no, one, no one wants to see any engine explode. So just like the EG33, the EJ257 in my STI, like I said, runs in an IAG air oil separator. Now what an air oil separator does is it separates the oil air vapor from the PCV system before putting it back into the intake track because all PCV systems will reroute all of your PCV back into the intake and you don't wanna be sucking in that air if you can avoid it because that's gonna start bringing down the octane rating of your fuel if you have fuel and oil vapor mixing inside of the cylinder. And then if you get that mixing, you can end up denaturing the fuel that, which is an increased chance for knock, which nobody wants. So as as you guys can see right there off of the head, there's a ventilation port and that port wraps around, it goes up to the air oil separator and then that's where it helps balance out some of that pressure before getting it back into the system. Now, I kinda wanna show you guys the inside of this air oil separator and show you what it looks like. So what I have laid out in front of me here is an IAG V2 air oil separator. Now what this does is it pulls out the oil vapor from the air vapor and separates them out through some really cool baffling. So if you can see inside of there, you'll see just some baffling as a light reflects off of it. You'll see some baffling in there and that's what the oil sticks to and then drips down and then gets recirculated back into the system. So if you can see to the bottom of the canister there, there are small ports that go to the bottom which go to this drain which then drains the oil back into the system. So it's using gravity to keep the oil at the bottom of the canister while the air itself flows out of the rest of the ports attached to the air oil separator. Now another benefit of having an air oil separator if you want to put that oil back into the system is having one that is heated using coolant. So on the bracket itself that mounts this thing to the strut tower, you'll you'll see one O-ring up here and another O-ring down here. That allows coolant to be able to flow through this, which heats up the air oil separator to the same temperature as the engine. You want that because that's going to help keep any of the moisture that builds up inside of this canister out of the oil. When you start mixing moisture and oil, that's when you start to get that yellow frothy looking whipped cream stuff that kind of looks like pee. And uh, nobody wants pee in their oil or in their engine because we all know bad things can happen when you pee in your oil. But it's a very basic system that pretty much just uses gravity. It uses some like crazy swirly effect to get the air to wherever it needs to go, but it's incredibly basic. So we know what an air oil separator does now. It is the medium between the PCV valve and the intake manifold to help keep clean air going back into the system. Now you can also use a catch can if you don't want an air oil separator. And what a catch can is gonna do is it's gonna do the exact same function as that AOS on the counter will. However, it just won't drain the oil back into the system. So every now and then you're gonna have to check those catch cans to make sure that they're not overflowing or filled with oil because then you can have oil starting to backtrack through the system. Whenever it comes to having an air oil separator or a catch can, turbo cars and high compression cars are going to need them the most because you have so much pressure being put inside of the engine and on the cylinder walls and the pistons themselves, you have a greater chance of having blow by. And the more blow by you have, obviously the more oil vapor you're gonna have being pushed through the system. So now that we've taken a look at how the air oil separator functions, what its job is, let's take a look at catch cans. So on the BRZ, I run a dual catch can set up by radium. As you can see here, there's just one in each corner and how these work, they function the exact same as the air oil separator. They are the medium between the PCV system and the intake manifold. So if you follow the hoses down, you can see this one goes down to the top of the block that goes to the PCV system. This top one comes back up here to the intake manifold. Same on the other side for this other catch can. You've got one hose that goes down to the PCV port on top of the block like I showed you guys on that short block that's been torn apart. And then you have the other hose that wraps up and then goes to the intake manifold 
manifold. So all this is is a median to keep that oil vapor out of the cylinders to keep the octane rating at its optimal peak to reduce knock. So that's just one of the benefits to having these, but I haven't drained or checked these catch cans since I've had them on the car. And I've had these catch cans on the car for probably about 4,000 miles now. So let's pull both of these out. Let's see how much oil both of them have. We'll pop these ones open and I'll show you guys the baffling on the inside of these catch cans, kind of like how we did it on the AOS. So these are our catch cans that we just pulled out of the car. Like I said, the, the BRZ uses a dual catch can setup so that way we have one dedicated port going to one, one to the other. Now, I can definitely hear inside of these. You can hear that there is fluid in them, so. Interesting, so this first catch can that I opened up is dry, 100% bone dry. So this is the one that came off of the driver's side of the car, the one that does not directly route to the PCV port, but the other ventilation port. So this sh this tells me that there is not too much oil, if any at all, being bypassed over to that other side and that this catch can is doing an awesome job in doing so. Um, one thing that I do really like about these radium catch cans is they come with a dipstick right here on the top of it. So as you can see, it just kind of goes all the way down. So that way you can see when you do need to empty your cans. So I do really like that design by radium. And I would suggest these catch cans to anyone who is considering doing a catch can setup. Now that we know one can is empty, let's check the other one and see what exactly is in it. And then we'll take a look inside of this catch can a little bit more. As you guys can see in there, there is blow by that has been caught by this can. I do want to pour it in here. That is like straight up oil. So there actually wasn't too much inside of this catch can. I should probably let it drain for a little bit longer. So we're just gonna leave that right there and uh, let it drain. We'll take a look at that. So there really wasn't too much in this catch can. Like I said, I installed these about 4,000 miles ago. So it's nice to see that one of them is bone dry. But as you can see on this other one, the baffling on here is what catches the oil and then pushes the air back through. So what happens is when the air oil vapor comes through, all of the oil grabs onto the baffling, ends up dripping down, uses gravity to go back into here, while this other port vents all the clean air back into the system. So it's a very, very basic design. Like I said, this is just a medium to go between the PCV valve and the intake manifold to keep all of that dirty air out of the system. So there are definitely pros and cons to having catch cans over an air oil separator and, air, and an air oil separator over a catch can. But let's see how much oil went into this and then we'll get into those pros and cons of talking about each. So as you guys can see inside of that can, there's definitely oil that the can caught. So we know it's doing its job and it's pretty liquidy oil also. So I'm guessing there is moisture in there that is kind of mixed around with the oil to make it so liquidy, but I would probably say it's, I don't know, maybe two tablespoons worth of oil that is caught in 4,000 miles, which is a pretty good thing. Both air oil separators and catch cans work the same. They use baffling. One of them just is a little more complex to be able to put all of that clean air and oil back into the system versus where catch cans just catch the oil they stay in the can until you empty it. However, with catch cans, if you wanted to, you could add a drain port on the bottom of this one if you really felt like it. Um, some catch cans do give you that opportunity to be able to do so. So if you wanna just drain it to a separate reservoir or try to plumb it back in the system doing something else, you can. But let's get into the pros and cons of having catch cans or an air oil separator. All right, so now that I actually have this air oil separator put back together, let's talk about the pros and cons of both of these. So obviously catch cans are going to be a little bit cheaper now that is not a bad thing. I have no problem running catch cans or a catch can in my car rather than running an air oil separator. An air oil separator is gonna be one of those things where you just you install it on your car, you don't have to worry about it. You, there's no maintenance that goes into having this. Once it's installed, you're done. With catch cans, you're gonna have a little bit of maintenance like we just did. You are going to have to empty those catch cans every once in a while just to get that oil out. Now it's not gonna be like every week or every other week. It's also entirely going to depend on how healthy your engine is and how much blow by it is having. Obviously, if your piston rings are starting to wear, you are gonna start having a lot more blow by and you are gonna start having a lot more oil go into your catch cans or your air oil separator. So, I mean, that is a benefit of having the air oil separator is if you own a car that either burns oil or has more blow by, an air oil separator will at least put the oil back into the system versus the catch cans just retaining it inside of the cans themselves. Now for price, catch cans are going to be significantly cheaper uh, for this dual catch can setup on the 
BRZ. I believe I paid around $280 to $320, somewhere in that price range for these. Uh, this air oil separator was around $400. But you can do single catch can setups for a fraction of the price. You can do a single catch can setup for roughly around $150, or you can fabricate your own. You can take an old can that you've had laying around in the garage and filter it into this just to catch all that blow by and then make another hose going out. You can certainly DIY your own catch cans. I've seen a lot of people do it before. It's no problem doing so. But overall, I mean, there's not really one over the other that you should get. It's comes down to, do you mind emptying your catch cans? Do you wanna save a little bit more money with this system? Um, if your car does have more blow by, like we talked about, maybe you should get an air oil separator, but both of these are very good systems to have in your car. And I do suggest having at least one or the other, at minimum, have at least one catch can in the car. Like I said, high compression engines and turbocharged engines are going to have a lot more potential for having blow by because you are running a lot more PSI inside of a compressed space, so you are going to have more more of that compressed air bypassing the piston going into the crankcase and then it's obviously going to need ventilated so either one of these systems big big I don't even know where I'm going with this. I suggest either one. All right, you guys, so I hope that definitely helps answer some of your guys' questions. Personally, I don't have any preference from catch cans over to air oil separators. Uh, like I showed you guys on the BRZ, I run catch cans. On the STI, I run an air oil separator. And even after the BRZ is turbocharged, it's going to be high compression with a turbocharger on it. So these things are going to be doing a lot more for us in the future. But having the added benefit, like I said, of being able to return that oil back to the system, maybe you would want an air oil separator, or if you don't mind having a little bit of extra maintenance and saving some money, maybe a catch can setup is the way to go for you. But like I said, I hope that answers your guys' questions when it comes down to air oil separators or catch cans. Not necessarily one is better than the other, but I suggest having at least one of them in your car. So if this video helped you, if you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button and turn it blue or whatever other color it turns because I don't even know anymore. Uh, down in the description below, I will link some air oil separators and catch can setups for some of the common cars on the channel, WRXs, STIs, BRZs of all years. I'll link a good amount of them down below. So if you guys are wanting to snag one of these setups, you can add it to your car. But if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that button. Hit your boy up. I'll put it like up here in this top, my left, your right corner today, this evening, to my tomorrow morning, wherever you are in the future, in the world. I don't know. But with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies. Woo!